So, so today we're going to talk about intermolecular forces, and we're going to use an interesting piece of material called a diaper to explain how um, intermolecular forces can work. So as we see here on the surface of the diaper, we have a material called polypropylene. It's a nonpolar material, so uh, water or your urine, if it gets in contact with it, will not actually interact with it. It'll go right through it and not, because water's polar, uh, the polypropylene is nonpolar. But right below, we have something called a wicking layer. So we're going to cut up this diaper here to see that wicking layer. And what actually happens is that wicking layer will now pull that water or urine into the cotton layer. And inside that cotton is a really important chemical called sodium polyacrylate. And here we can see that that sodium polyacrylate actually has a charge associated with it. We have its normal carbon backbone structure here, but then on the branches of those uh, carbon backbone is charged uh, molecules. And what would happen is as the water starts to interact with the sodium polyacrylate, it'll actually want to um, um, favor that and actually start to share um, a bond between the negative charge of the sodium polyacrylate as well as the positive side and uh, area where electrons are pulling away from water. So we can see here that we expect the water to actually bond and get absorbed um, into that sodium polyacrylate. So let's go ahead and start to cut up this uh, diaper here so we can break down the different layers of it. So I'm going to cut this diaper in half. And then what I'm going to do from here is essentially uh, rip off the top smooth uh, polypropylene layer. So let me go ahead and use my uh, strong skills to peel that off here. And then we can start to see that there's a square section here, which is the wicking that will pull the uh, urine uh, out, you know, from the polypropylene side into this piece of cotton material that we have here. All right, so let me go ahead and now separate out this wicking layer here from the polypropylene and pull that out and then we can start to see. Now we don't know exactly what's in this wicking layer. It's usually proprietary within the company, but we know it has uh, specific functions here. All right, so now that you see that, what I'm going to do here now is start to break this cotton here into just little pieces. I'm going to break this into little pieces because inside this cotton is the sodium polyacrylate that we want to uh, be able to collect. It's in a powder form, so what I will do is pull this cotton apart, and now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and quickly do that to the other side. I won't necessarily worry about the wicking layer, but just so you can get a little bit more uh, sodium polyacrylate out of this, this fancy diaper here. I take care of that, and this should be good enough. Uh, typically, I would say they wouldn't have more than about a gram of this sodium polyacrylate inside the diaper. Okay, now that we've had that covered, I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and cover this bag up. Do a little twist. Shake it, try to get the powder outside. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Try to get a little powder outside of this. And all right. Now, what we should see here, as I remove this, we should start to see some powder collecting here. And uh, yeah, let me go ahead and shake it up one more time, just to really get enough powder out of the, the bag. This is a good arm workout, by the way, if you're ever interested in uh, exercise while you do chemistry. All right. Let me start to separate this out. You can start to see some of the powder collecting here. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but if we continue to shake it a little bit more, we'll see some powder continue to come out. So let me go ahead and grab a beaker. start to see as I shake this up that we get powder collecting on the garbage bag. Alright. All right. And I can continue to do this uh, just to show the case, but for sakes we're going to set this aside now 
And what we want to see next is what's important about sodium polyacrylate is that it can pretty much absorb about 500 times its mass in water. So if we actually take a different here now, a little bit beaker, a little bit bigger beaker with the bottom covered in sodium polyacrylate, it doesn't look like much. If we now take this DI water here, and water typically will um, do a better job at um, allowing the sodium polyacrylate to absorb it relative to urine because urine has other charged um, um, ions that will actually compete with the water um, being absorbed by the sodium polyacrylate. So anyways, we're going to now take this water, throw a little bit in here, let it shake up. And again, remember that was water, so as soon as I take this, I can dump it upside down and we see that the water has been absorbed. That's uh, pretty fascinating. So we can actually do this again if we like, and this will take quite a bit of water. So let me add a little bit more here, and you can see now that it's already absorbed the water, and we are in pretty good shape. So that's one of the beauties about this polar interaction between water and sodium polyacrylate is that it can absorb a lot of this water um, as it passes through the, the nonpolar uh, polypropylene. So another fascinating thing about the diapers is now we can uh, start to look at the competing nature of water and a nonpolar uh, substance like vegetable oil. So here we just have water with blue dye. It's just pure water, but we wanted to show the difference between the vegetable oil and the water, so we added a little food coloring there. So if we have this water, um, and then I add some vegetable oil to the top of it, you'll start to see it separate out again, being that vegetable oil is nonpolar and water is polar. So again, we talked about the covering of the diaper being a material called polypropylene here. So what's, again, this polypropylene is nonpolar. So we can almost start to uh, predict what's going to happen in this relative situation where if we have a nonpolar uh, material dipped into a solution that has both polar and nonpolar. So when I do this here, I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to now dip that polypropylene into there and pour it out. And you can see a little bit of the blue got in there, but not really much. More what happened is that the vegetable on top, which is nonpolar, got sucked up by this polypropylene. So I can even flip it on its other side now and try that again. And we can see that now even clearer that it just picked up the vegetable oil because of the nonpolar nonpolar interactions between the polypropylene of the diaper and the vegetable oil. So this is just another interesting demo to essentially indicate uh, intermolecular forces.